to Arc Tutorials. This is Angular 14 full tutorial series for absolute beginners. In the last episode, we learned about installing Angular using npm cli command and then we created a new project using ng new command. What we did was basically we used Angular CLI utility commands. CLI stands for command line interface. That means Angular framework itself provides few commands that we can easily run and generate lot of building blocks of Angular. Some of the building blocks like services, directive, pipes, routing, module, interceptor and much much more can be generated all through the command line. So that gives us a starter pack and kind of kind of a gives a heads up in terms of what we are trying to build. It makes our coding life easy basically. So we'll learn everything about it in today's episode. Let's get started. This is part five of the series. Make sure that if you need any help or job support or technical help or training, please do reach out to me at surya.arad at gmail.com. If you like my work and tutorials, please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash tutorials. Thank you in advance. All right. So in this playlist, we have reached episode number five. Uh, if you haven't checked out the previous episodes, I'll request you to please check them out so that you learn and you have continuity in your learning. All right. So today we are focusing on Angular CLI commands. We will learn a lot of commands which you will use them on a date on a daily basis as an Angular developer. The first two commands, if you remember, we used in the last episode npm install hyphen g at the rate angular cli will install the angular application and using ng space new space project name generates a new angular application in your local please do refer to the previous episode if you haven't checked out those two commands yet today we'll see the other uh, commands that are available like ng serve ng test ng build and much much more let's get started first command is ng serve all right, so I'm going to open up my terminal. Now you can use any um, any uh, tool that you would like. Uh, in my case, I'm using the terminal which is built inside the Visual Studio code. It can be anything for you. Make sure that you are inside the project folder. This is our project that we created, Arc Invoice. Make sure that you are inside that particular folder. If you see my path, I'm inside the project folder, All right? So you should be in the project folder in order to run these commands. That's where Angular is installed. All right. So the command we are running is ng serve. Now let me quickly make some notes for you because we'll cover some important topics. Whenever you want to run your application, you will run the command ng serve. Run the Angular application. You will use the command ng serve. Now ng serve will create these files at runtime and launch Angular live development server at default port number 4200. So remember that the default port is 4200. Okay, I'll show you how to change it in just a bit. So basically, when you run ng-serve, it will build the application, it will compile the application, it will optimize, it will generate the bundles and will make, so this is basically like compiling your application and getting it ready. Once it is compiled, you can open this port number that's by default, which is in our case, by default, it's localhost 4200. And you should see this screen. That means your basic Angular application is up and running. All right. So that's for the ng, ng serve command. Now, there would be times when you're already running some other port or application on that port. You want to change the port. So then all you have to do is ng serve hyphen hyphen port and give the new port number, let's say 4300. So now Angular would generate the bundle, compile the application, generate the whatever files required and run it on port number 4300 if it's available. So now if you see it's running on localhost 4300. Earlier it was running on 42. If I run it, I won't get anything. But now that I change the port, we will use 4300. That's for ng-serve. So ng-serve is used to run the app Angular application. The default port is 4200. You can always change it with the params and change the port number. All right, that was for ng-serve. The next command is ng-test. Now, whenever you want to test your unit tests, right? Unit tests. Now, 
you can find the unit tests inside the source folder and by how you can recognize them is they will have ending with dot spec dot ts okay so if you go to source and go to app you would see one by default that is created right you see here app component dot spec dot ts whichever is ending with dot spec dot ts it means it's a unit test okay and when you run the command ng test it will run all the tests that are available inside the source folder in our case right now it will only run one because there's only one spec file but it has three specs inside it one test three specs all right so let's see it will open up this browser chrome browser it's using karma to run the tests okay so remember these things and it will give you the output here executed three of three success so ng test will open up new chrome browser browser we can always change it to headless mode so that it runs automatically and without opening we can do that as well now next thing that you should know is often often asked in uh, interviews also is what is the runner it's the karma runner the tests are written in typescript but it's basically jasmine right so <coughs> tests are written in jasmine and are run in karma and by default the port is 9876 if you see here it's running on port localhost 9876 again which we can customize and change in our package.json or angular.json okay that will cover some other time when we reach to testing i don't want to spend too much time in testing here but you know that the command is ng test which is used to run uh, which is which we use to run the unit tests the unit tests are found inside the source folder it, they will have the ending with dot spec dot ts it means it's a unit test ng test will open a new chrome browser if you don't want that you can run it in a headless mode that means no chrome browser will be opened but it will run in the background ng test will uses karma test runner to run all the tests which are in jasmine the default port is 9876 perfect i hope it's clear these two commands so far will keep going all right so the next one is ng e2e now remember that this is deprecated okay that means angular team used to support protractor which is for end-to-end -end testing now they have discontinued it but if you are learning on a version where you see e2e folder inside here if you see a e2e folder that means you are still running on old version and you will see e2e command you can run this only for older versions of angular okay eight nine around those okay maybe 10 as well we'll check but if you see a e2e folder that means you can run ng e2e command which is used which is similar to ng test but this will run end-to-end -end tests okay i'm not focusing much on it because we are learning angular 14 i want you to learn what is available not the deprecated one so this is deprecated but you should be knowing for your knowledge the next one is ng build now once we know that our application is ready and it's good it's good to deploy it's ready to be ready to go to the next environment from localhost to dev to qa to uat to prod what we need to do is generate the artifacts right generate the build artifacts now what do i mean by artifacts angular is a single page application spa right is a single page application that means it will have one index.html and one main.js one polyfills.js and it will have styles.js and it will have a runtime information so runtime dot js okay these are the artifacts it requires so when we when we run ng build it will generate the artifacts inside dist folder okay again we can customize the name which folder we want but by default it generates a dist folder inside which we see all these files which will then go to higher environment or get deployed the artifacts 
gets deployed to server okay mostly it's done in the build pipeline okay pipelines now please do not confuse with tap or washroom uh, pipelines here okay because these are I'm talking about is rep repo builds it may be your bit bucket uh, github or etc or likes of that Azure, etc etc right you get the idea that the pipelines will run this command basically so let's run that and I'll show you ng build <coughs> so once you have the build folder you would see a dist folder come up which would have the latest code that is created it will be optimized it will be including only builds that you need so you see it generated main it generated polyfills it generated runtime it generated styles you can see that here inside the dist you see all these files now you can copy this folder as it is and take it to your server okay that's how angular applications get built and deployed I hope it's clear the command why we use it and how to use it next so the next one is ng lint now most of the uh, enterprises right I'm sure you're working in some uh, enterprise they will have some kind of a coding standards okay or you can they must be using a default ES6 linting okay now what does lint mean lint means to enforce uh, some kind of guidelines coding guidelines like you cannot use certain things directly you cannot uh, define equal to equal to you should use strict operator etc etc so these are all coding standards which are created and then when we run ng lint it checks our code for compatibility okay checks code for compatibility now I'm going to show you a quick example without going into too much of details just to show you how how linting works let's say we have this app component.ts and let me throw in ng on in it on in it and let me just create a folder and nothing much so if you see on in it okay if you see there is no error right that means there is no compilation error okay but you would see lint error in this so if I run ng serve I'll show you the difference because I want you to really understand uh, all of these concepts because this is where um, you will really uh, master angular because if you see it has compiled successfully and when I go to my browser and I refresh sorry which had changed the port so now back to 42 and see the console right and okay so you don't see anything right I'll show you why <coughs> okay so if you see there is no compilation error it compiled successfully but there is a problem here if you run ng lint you will see the problem ng lint and now it's linting the source code to check if there are any errors or mistakes or problems so now it is selling everything is passing perfectly now let's see what I'll do see on a net okay still passing uh, let me do one thing ng on in it and let me throw in a method query real quick or variable and I'm, since there is no standard set here I'm trying to find out and try to fail this use case um, let's see what it does it should ideally throw and say that it should implement um, on in it and stuff like that but it's not so let's check okay so probably I'll check this out but remember that ng lint will check for any uh, linting errors and stuff like that let's see if I can fail something for you real quick or <coughs> I'm trying to see if I can fail if not I'll show you in some other episode but remember that linting is done to check the coding standards um, to make sure that they are properly run it is still passing okay let 
what else can we do to fail it mm -hmm. ng on in it or let me try like this okay i got an idea now or let's see if i say implements on in it right so i'm going to make it on in it and i will not implement it this should probably solve the lint it should so it should show that linting error still okay i think we should get it now if not i'll show you in so okay i'll show you in some other example uh, maybe i should i don't have a standard set right now but i will i promise i will cover this in the next one let's keep moving so ng lint is whenever you run it will do some kind of a check for coding standards that are already defined in your package and you can enforce certain guidelines okay most enterprises will do that okay let's move to the next one ng add now whenever you want to add a new package right uh, say you want to add material design into angular application you can run simply ng add at the rate angular material right so ng add is used for ac adding the packages in your code adding new packages into the code okay that's what ng add do we will learn uh, we will use this ng add very frequently in the next episodes as i add bootstrap material and all of those now ng config now ng config will configure basically whatever is available now you can see the schematics here that we have now all of this is the ng config which will list down and describe basically your ng configuration okay now one other place where you can see this is in your angular.json okay so if you go to angular.json file and you can see here it's the same thing that you are seeing here when you type it so that is for a quick reference um, if you don't want to really open the file and check it and really want to quickly glance what is there you can run the command ng config and real quick it will show you what are the details it will list it out for you all right now that is for ng config okay the next is ng version now let's say you want to check the version of which version of angular you're running i am on 14 if you see here it's all 14 if you run you should see uh, the version that is that you are right now on okay so ng version will tell you the latest uh, the current version you are at ng config will list angular.json file details in command line so you can check it out or verify alrighty let's go to the next one we have a lot of commands to cover now ng update is something if you are trying to update your angular applications uh, you will run the ng update command we have covered this in episode number three so make sure that you check it out okay in the series so basically you are there is a process of how you will update it's not straightforward not just one command but there is set of uh, things and steps that you need to make sure that you're doing uh, when you're updating so make sure that you go through that episode number three in order to learn how to update or how that particular thing works ng run um, now again this is uh, simple as that so um, ng run so especially if you are running multiple projects okay now let's say ng run now right now we have only one project right you see we have only right now one project but we can have multiple pro projects inside this right so angular supports multiple projects inside the same repo that's also called mono repo okay that means you can run multiple apps inside multiple apps inside the same project directory okay multiple apps inside the same repo is called mono repo so then you can use ng run to specify which command which project you want to run okay that is where you'll pass the argument and you will run that particular project we will see this when we do multi uh, towards the end of the series when i build multiple projects together so we'll see that but know that ng run will help you run a specific project at any point of time all right now coming to the big boss of 
angular CLI okay the most important one that's why I was a little hurrying uh, to reach here which is through ng generate now you can see here I've list down everything that you can generate using angular CLI using angular CLI you can generate an application you can generate module you can generate a component service pipe class interface guard interceptor library enum web worker service worker right so all these things we can generate I'll show you a few examples um, and then we'll close this particular episode but this is one of the most important command that you will run on a daily basis okay now I'm saying NGG the shortcut for that is NGG or NG generate either way is fine you can write NGG or ng generate okay so I'm writing ng let me show you first with generate and say component what you will this is a standard format you will specify what you want to generate component pipe service interceptor library class enum whichever whatever you want to generate you give that name of that and then followed by the name I'm going to say header so now if you see it has generated a component by the name header inside my source folder app you see here it has generated a component because I said ng generate component we'll learn everything about that don't worry about it just keep running the commands with me and practice angular CLI ng generate service and I'll call it users it will generate a service file here you see service then ng generate pipe I'll say phone phone number pipe so it will generate a pipe then I'm going to say important piece ng generate module and I'm going to say invoices so it will generate a module which is invoices right so basically the command is same the format is same if you look here you will write ng generate space what you want to generate and then followed by the name of it right you can generate any of these here now let's say I'll show you a shortcut now you will write ng generate class name and I will write um, say payments so it will generate a class now I'm using a shorthand I'm not using entire word generate so that's how you can use and it will automatically generate now so now it's clear that ng generate will help us in generating the basic boilerplate in generating the boilerplate plate for whatever we run command for okay you can use it to run class interface pipe filter component whatever you type so I want you to go ahead type each one of these and make sure that you're comfortable in generating because going forward in every episode that we will do we will be heavily using ng generate I don't want that to be a surprise to you okay that's all uh, angular CLI has to offer these are the commands that you will run almost on a uh, few commands like ng build and those things you may not do it daily but ng serve ng test ng run ng lint ng add ng generate all of this you will use on a daily basis so make sure that till here you have practiced with me and you have absolutely 100% confidence of whatever we have done in today's episode with respect to angular CLI you will learn everything end to end in the next episode I'm going to walk you through the entire folder structure the default folder structure the project structure how it is organized what is the importance of each file and why it is important what changes you will need to do in which file everything so after that you will be able to manage change the configuration according to your project I hope it's clear to you um, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I'm enjoying creating this for you so I look forward to seeing you in the next episode where we will learn about the folder structure and the project structure thank you so much for joining in this episode if you like my work and tutorials please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash see you in the next episode